you know, to everybody on the call, I just, you know, uh, want to make sure I thank you guys for covering us. I know this is, uh, um, these are hard times. I know you guys, um, this isn't how it normally is. Um, but I want to thank you guys for, uh, you know, taking the time. I know this is short, maybe short notice, but, uh, um, after Marty talked, thought it was important for, uh, we thought it was important for me to get on with you guys as well. So thank you. Um, you know, obviously these are, uh, these are difficult times for everyone across our country. And, um, you know, we want to be, uh, we want to be cognizant of that while also looking towards the future, being excited about the draft, being excited about our team. But, you know, I, I do feel it's important, uh, in some small way to make sure that, you know, I use this platform to say thank you to everybody that's out there. That's, that's, you know, keeping our country uh, safe and strong. And, and uh, you know, I've, I'm a guy that grew up in New York City and, and talking to my friends there and my sister and all those people, just the challenges that people face there, people face right here in Mecklenburg County and in Charlotte. And, uh, so I, I can't be more grateful to the people that are out there that on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the EMS, the, the, the firefighters, the, the police, the, the nursing home workers, the people at the grocery store. I think this is a time where all of us can... Uh, can uh, be excited about football, but also have tremendous perspective about what's happening around us. So um, I just thought I'd say that at this time. And, uh, you know, me and my family, my family and I, I should say, we're managing online school at three different schools, working really hard on the draft and, and on our football team, and also trying to spend some time to uh, get closer as a family. You know, sometimes when you're a football coach, uh, you're not home for dinner, and, and I'm having a chance to do that right now. So I'm very grateful for that. So just thought I'd say that before we got into the football. And, with that, I'll see whatever questions you guys have. Coach Steve Reed with the Associated Press. I guess, you know, one of the biggest uh, things here this offseason was, you know, the release of Cam Newton. And I, I just wonder if you could talk about that. Was What did you – what went into that decision? And, and did he end up just not being a fit in your offense? Or what went into your that decision from your perspective? You know, that, that, that was obviously a really hard decision. And, um, you know, for me coming in, I never really had a chance to, to work with him or be with him. I think maybe for some of the other guys, um, had, had maybe had a little more perspective like Marty. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, I, I really enjoyed getting to know Cam and, and seeing the work that he was putting in coming back from the injury. I mean, there's certainly no doubt that he was grinding his way back. I just think that, you know, we felt in the end it was the best thing for our team to, to, sort, to sort of move forward. And, you know, I have no doubt that he'll play well. I mean, he, he's a great quarterback. We've all seen the things that he's done. Um, I just think as we move forward, we thought that, you know, what this was the right time for us. We saw the opportunity to get Teddy and um, really felt like, you know, what he, he was the right fit for us. And so I uh, went ahead and made that, you know, made that call. Not an easy call, but, you know, one that we thought was the best thing for us moving forward. Coach, this is Jason Brown with Spectrum News in Charlotte. Just to follow up on, on Cam saying, obviously you felt that Teddy was the, the best fit for you guys. Was Cam's recent injury history, was that, did that play a factor in this decision? Um, you, you know, I, 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 I don't even want to make it too much about, you know, uh, Cam in a negative way because, you know, I've, again, I have so much respect for him and the player that he is and the player that he'll probably continue, to, that he definitely will continue to be. Um, to me, it was just, you know, at the, end of, at the end of the day, you have to make decisions about, you know, hey, what are we going to do moving forward? And we felt like um, we felt like this was the time to, to go in this direction, to, to bring Teddy on. And, um, you know, obviously his relationship with Joe, um, knowing the offense, you know, um, um, the things that he's done in this offense just made sense to us. Hey, Matt, it's Joe. If you would indulge me just one more, Cam, was there a fit – uh, issue potentially. I mean, you mentioned how Teddy knows Joe's offense and so forth. And with you coming in and Joe coming in with a new scheme, was there kind of the idea of just starting fresh at that position and, and, and did Teddy fit that scheme better than Cam? I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a comparison. I think, you know, uh, uh, you know, Cam Newton's a great quarterback and can play in any system. You know, I just think, um, you know, in a, in a year like this, especially, you know, where, where you know, we're all kind of in our homes, I think Teddy just is, uh, um, you know, Teddy, Teddy's a guy that's been in this offense, knows this offense, has great familiarity with Joe. Um, it just makes sense to us. But um, it really, again, I don't want to make, it's not a comparison to me as much as it is just sort of this was an opportunity for us and, and, and we took it. Hey, Matt, Jordan Rodriguez, nice to see you. Hope you and your family are, are doing well, and hopefully you guys are staying sane as well over there um, with all the kids at home. Um, so 
I wanted to know a little bit more about your pre-draft process, um, how you guys have pivoted into all virtual. Um, and Marty indicated that it was, you know, because you guys have stocked uh, the deck a little bit offensively um, in free agency indicated that you guys might be looking a little bit more thoroughly at some of the defensive players in the draft. And if you could evaluate that class. Yeah. Um, first of all, in terms of the process, I, I think, you know, um, being kind of, you know, in, in our houses, there's really nothing much more to do than to, than to, 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 to evaluate film. And so, I mean, we're able to go back on prospects now two years in some cases, and, and you maybe you wouldn't have time to do that if we were in the offices and managing workouts and all those things. So if anything, you know, I feel like we should be more prepared in terms of film evaluation, staff evaluations of, of, uh, of the, you know, upcoming draft prospects. Um, uh, I think the communication has been great. You know, this is my first time. I mean, I have, I have every, you know, between my three kids, you know, I have three kids in three different schools and, you know, I've, I've never really been on this technology before, but um, I didn't realize quite how, how focused you could be and how much work you could get done. And so I think we're getting a lot of work done. Um, Marty's been fantastic. He and I talk multiple times every day. Um, I think, you know, when you have a, a staff like ours, we know exactly the type of player we want. We have visions for the players and Marty's done a great job of, 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 you know, finding those guys in the draft. So I, I think it'll be a, a really good process. And as we really hone in on these next couple of weeks, I think there's a third part of your question that maybe I, I didn't answer. I'm sorry. Um, uh, just an evaluation of the specifically the defensive draft class where yeah, you yeah, think yeah. the positions of strength are. Yeah. You know, I, I think, um, I think for us, obviously, you know, we, 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 we got a lot of guys in free agency on offense. Um, you know, that doesn't mean though, in my mind, at least that we won't draft a guy on offense. You know I mean? We, we, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a thought of, you know, Hey, you throw your fastball. If we, if we, if we're really good on offense, we want to continue to love and we'll draft you know, the best available player. But we just understand that there's guys on defense that we need to go get some goal tap to fill. We were not able to fill in free agency. And I think our mindset in free agency was, you know, don't, we didn't want to go overspend, you know, on any one player or any two players. We wanted to make sure that we put a lot of depth in a lot of positions. Um, so uh, I think it is a deep uh, draft defensively, um, but also it's, you know, probably going to shape up to be one of the bigger receiver drafts as well. And so it'll be really interesting to see how the board runs. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're evaluating all positions and, uh, unlike other years where you could have a rookie mini camp after the draft, or you have pro days where you can go find some, you know, there's really not that opportunity. So we have to make sure that we're doing a good job, even on the guys that are going to be undrafted to see who could be a fit for us. Man, hey, David, you, uh, glad to see you uh, doing well. And I want to ask you, Marty said that uh, you've had internal discussions on Christian McCaffrey, and I wonder how you feel like he feels for your long-term plans. What, what will be the impact of him and, uh, as far as getting him an extension? Yeah, you know, I look at this, you know, I take my role in this. So I want to make this very clear how I think of this, right? Like, I think of my role as the coach. I mean, I, my job is to coach the guys up until they're here or not here. That's for anybody, you know, Marty's, those guys handle the contracts and all that. So like, you know, I, I, I think Christian McCaffrey is a center. He's player that you can, you know, build a team. You know, and I think that he's one of those guys that can do anything. And I think he really you know, builds to the culture that you want to have within the building. I mean, we want to be a serious football place. You know, we want to be a place that that it's all about the game, you know, and, and I think that's who Christian McCaffrey is. And so, um, you know, one of the reasons why I hired Joe was, you know, he doesn't have that, you know, that old school, like, hey, this guy plays this, we have to do this. This is my system, leave me alone. I, I hired Joe because I know that he's going to utilize guys to their strengths. And so that's what Christian is. And, and to label him a, a throwback, that's, you know, that's not respectful to him. I mean, he's a tailback slash wide out. I mean, he can, he can do it all returner. So I'm anxious to, to get him out there. I'm anxious to, you know, continue to build this thing around him. Um, I think he's going to be a, a special player for us. And, um, but, you know, contracts and all that stuff, you know, Marty, you know, he, I know he handles those things. And obviously when he, you know, asked me my input, you know, I'm going to give it to him, but I'm a coach. I mean, I want as many good players as possible. And, you know, I trust the end manage, you know, contracts and all that stuff. Hey, Matt. glad to hear you're doing well. Um, I was just wondering, you had talked a lot to us about how excited you were for the to spend time with the players and finally get that opportunity. What's it like not now having that this week and it going potentially virtually in the future? 
Yeah, it's 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 not fun, you know, because um, I'm a coach because I like coaching players, and uh, that is you know simplest. You know, I'll coach till I'm 90. I'll be coaching you know junior high football. So I like coaching players, and the players, and that part of it is over with. You know that you know like that being said, I think you know when you see what's happening around the country, it kind of puts into perspective like, hey, Matt, stop. You know, don't feel sorry for yourself. But I also think this is a tremendous opportunity for us to to truly you know, people say the word culture build. I don't know what that means other than you know, if we can be a team that, you know, um, when the time is right, you know, they're still negotiating what we're allowed to do. But if, if at some point we're allowed to have uh, connections with our players, um, if we can be the best at it that we possibly can be, then, you know, you know, we, we become a team that's stronger. And so, um, you know, being a first year head coach, this is obviously not ideal, but it is what it is. And I, you know, I try not to complain. So, um, I, I miss it. I would like to be around the guys, you know, but at the end of the day, I want them to do what's right for not just them, but for them and their families. And, and for me, like I said earlier, you know, it's, it's no small thing. I'm a, this is a great treat to spend the night and have dinner with my family, you know, to, I've gone on more walks than I ever have in my life, you know, so um, this is, this is good for me too. Hey Matt, Will Kunkel here in Fox and Charlotte. Good to see you, man. Um, you? What role did uh, Temple kind of play in the fact that you knew Robbie and Tahir as well, just the familiarity they can vouch for you in their own meeting rooms, uh, just kind of that familiarity. What kind of role did that play? Um, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's probably very similar to seeing some of the guys that were here, you know, end up at, you know, some other places where the coaches knew them. I think as a, as a, as a, as a coach, for easy, the hard thing is you're, 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 you're predicting the future based upon the past, right? And so there's so many variables, age, you know, mentality, all those things. Um, in, in free agency, quite often you, you end up signing guys that you don't know. I think anytime you have a chance to, to sign a guy that you do know, and that, I'll extend that to like Seth Roberts, you know, uh, Jake Peach was with Seth, Seth in Oakland. And, and, you know, I said, hey, what kind of guy is he? And he said, oh, he's this, he's that. I think those things are important, you know. Uh, that being said, you know, and, 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 you know, I've had people say to me like, boy, you know, why, why so many Temple guys? I, we wouldn't have gotten a lot of those guys. They would have gone somewhere else if it wasn't for our staff. You know, PJ didn't have just Carolina. PJ Walker had seven teams trying to sign him. And our, at the time, you know, we had, you know, we had uh, three quarterbacks on the roster at the time. But I think PJ, you know, knows me, believes in me, knows our staff, believes in our staff happens to live right here in Charlotte. Uh, you know, his girlfriend's a teacher in Charlotte or, or works in Charlotte. So um, that was one. You know, Robbie Anderson had a lot of places to go. But I think he saw Joe Brady's offense as a chance for him to really break out. You know, I mean, he knows me. I don't, I, you know, if we were up to me, we'd run the ball every play. So, I mean, it's not certainly not maybe as much me as it was Joe and his relationship with Teddy going all the way back to South Florida. So uh, to hear, you know, to hear's a guy, you know, he's got four kids. He lives in Atlanta. Um, you know, if he's going to, if he's going to play, uh, you know, on a one year deal, he wanted it to be as close to home. So I think every one of those is a unique thing, but from my perspective, uh, knowing those guys, knowing, you know, who they are, I think they were, you know, especially at the value they were at, I think they were great, great picks for us. But I also think on their end, you know, they knew what they were getting with this coaching staff and, and felt like, Hey, this might be a good fit for us, for them as well. Matt, hey, Matt you- Nick Carboni from WCNC Charlotte. Um, just wondering now that the NFL has set what the draft will be like for you all what you guys are kind of working through ahead of time to make sure you minimize the challenges of that. And what do you think that'll be like? Um, you know, it, it'll be unique. You know, when I was at, at the draft in New York, obviously there was a ton of people in, in there, in, you know, in the, in the war room when the pick came and there's communication, but really at the end of the day, um, that communication really, you know, can be done just as well, you know, over this technology. And so, um, you know, we have great people at, at Carolina, you know, James Hammonds are, you know, the head of our IT, Sean Patton, Tom Green, like they've done an amazing job, even putting together this technology ahead of time for coaches to be able to communicate. If we can ever do these off season workouts for the players, they've had those ready. Um, so just, you know, we were ahead of this technology, uh, at least in our building. So I think they'll have a great plan for draft night, but I think the biggest key is, is the fact that Marty and I talk to each other so much. I mean, um, again, multiple times throughout the day and, uh, you know, you, you know, Marty's not much of a texter. He's more of a phone guy. So we get on the phone, we talk, we go through everything. Same thing with our staff. And um, I think that'll all be good. I think the challenges on draft night will just be, you know, getting used to the technology and running from here and the clock being on us. But, you know, that is what it is. We'll, we'll, we'll have fun with it. Matt, I wonder if you could address um, what do you feel like are the your team's biggest needs right now up and down the roster now that free agency has kind of played out? What, what, where do you see as the biggest needs? 
Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously just, you know, some depth on, on the defensive side of the ball. You know, I think we really addressed a lot of the depth on, on offense, but just the depth on the defensive side of the ball. I was really happy to get Justin Burris in free agency. Um, he was a guy that we, we earmarked early, almost the first day, and had some experience. Al Holcomb had been with him. But, you know, he's a guy who's been a nickel, who's been a corner, who's been a safety, and the ability to, you know, re-sign Trey Boston. I thought those were pivotal, pivotal things for us on defense because, um, you know, we knew we needed that stability at safety. Um, but I think – I just think depth, you know, I think, you know, in terms of, you know, um, you know, at the corner position on the defensive line at linebacker, those will be our biggest challenges. We like the players we have in a lot of those positions, but as you know, this, the season's a hard one. And who are the young players that can come in, uh, you know, in the secondary on the defensive line and 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 give give us quality snaps, especially in the second half of the year. Matt, with Phil Orvin from Channel Nine. Um, without these pro days, how challenging is it to find those undrafted free agents and maybe some of the later on guys that that you would get a better look at potentially? It, it's certainly a challenge. Um, you, know, we, you know, our staff is a unique mix. We have a lot of, you know, guys that are coming from NFL last year. We also have a lot of guys coming from college. I think, um, you know, our ability to talk about guys we've played against, you know, in, at the college level to, to pretty much have a guy on every staff, um, you know, across the, across the country really that, you know, that we can call who will give us the real insight. And I think our, 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 our personnel people have done a great job, you know, um, it, it's no pro days right now, but like Jeff Morrow and Eric Stokes and Marty Herney and those guys, they've been out in these, these, you know, colleges all year and getting, you know, getting write-ups on everybody. So I think it's just a matter of us grinding through the data, going back through those things. The biggest issue is that you don't really have at a pro day for guys that didn't go to the combine or if they went to the combine and didn't run thinking, Hey, I'll run in a month at my pro day. We don't have that data on those guys. And so, um, it makes it a little more old school. You have to go back and really trust the film and watch the film, but you just like maybe a few more data points, but you know, we, we don't have them, but neither does any other team. And so I'm hoping that some of our connections and I'm really obviously going to trust the work of, and Marty's going to trust the work of our scouts and personnel guys, because, you know, it, it's unique for me. I, I, on the other end, the last seven years, I've had a Carolina Panther scout coming through the building and talking to me when I was a college coach. And I know that the way that those guys work and how detailed they are. So now being on this side, I have a lot of confidence in, in our personnel people. We have time hey, for a couple more guys. Matt, just a couple um, free agency questions for you. Um, will you guys play T.R. Whitehead at middle linebacker? Um, and then also um, what went into the decision-making process for the Eric Reed release with a couple years left on his contract? Um, I'll talk about Tahir first. Um, you know, Tahir's a guy that's, you know, he played, he played Will in um, Oakland. You know, I think when you look at our, our division um, and you look at the NFC South, you know, you're not really talking about a bunch of, you know, 21 and 12 personnel grind it, running it teams. So I think the Mike and the Will, when you get into nickel defense is the same thing. Like they're just standing two feet apart from each other. So, um, you know, I, I try to think of everything as like positionless football in my mind, you know, because I think when you start saying, hey, this guy's got to play this, then you're always – you're never playing guys the, the next best player. So, um, to here's a guy that, you know, we think can, can, can play Mike, even though he's played Will most of his career. He played Will last year in Oakland. And Shaq Thompson's a guy that we think can play Mike. Jermaine Carter's a guy that we're high on. So, I think for us, you know, we had kind of hoped that throughout this time we would – you know, because they're the same thing really in terms of assignments in a lot of ways, not all the time. But we would kind of cross-train them and, and, and see who's a better fit. But um, – I know Tahir can do it, and, and I certainly know that Shaq, you know, Shaq's done it before. There's evidence on tape when Luke's been, you know, down or out or whatever of seeing Shaq do it. So I think we just felt like, hey, let's get the, you know, best couple of players. And the thing to me about Tahir Whitehead, you know, it, it, you know, I watched Hard Knocks last year, and watching him even on Hard Knocks, I mean, this is a guy that's uh, an elite worker. You know, I go back to I'm a first-year head coach at Temple because I didn't coach him as a head coach. I, he was an, I was an assistant when he was there. I was the offensive coordinator. I never really coached Tahir. But, um, you know, we had a bunch of uh, recruits in. We had a Saturday morning scrimmage. It's Friday night. They're from Pittsburgh. So we're showing them around the facility at 10 o'clock at night. And I could hear the weight room. And here's to here. He's a second or third year linebacker for the Detroit Lions. And he's down in the weight room, you know, working out. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And, and he's just that driven. And so to me, um, more than anything, I think he's going to bring a mindset. Not that we don't have it, but I know he has it. And so if you can get as many guys like that who are serious about football like Shaq is, like he is, I think you have something really like the tray is you have something really special. So um, long story, 
you know, one of those two guys will be the Mike we think's day one. And I know he can do it. It's just a matter of who's the right, you know, fit. And, and that's really more Phil will figure that out, to be quite honest with you. Um, we got time. Sorry, Coach. Hey, David, David Newton again. I um, wanted to ask you, I know you guys have talked to a lot of quarterbacks uh, during the pre-draft process. Uh, how settled do you feel like you are at that position right now? And, or have you ruled out taking a quarterback either with your first pick or a lower pick? Uh, you know, I, I'll never, you know, rule anything out, you know, because, you know, and that's something Marty's, you know, kind of, you know, again, a lot of this for me as a head coach, I've been in the draft room as an assistant. I've never been as a head coach. I think, you know, the, the advice from Marty has been, you know, you never know what's going to happen on, 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 you know, on the clock. You know, people come to you with trades, people come to you with all that. So, um, and that's just kind of the way my mind's always been, you know, people say process and they say, what does that mean? It just sounds so boring. You know, not to me, like it means, don't, don't not evaluate the quarterbacks. Don't not evaluate the receivers because you think you have a lot of guys there. Our, that's not our job. That's, that's, you know, Marty's job or my job or whoever. But for all of us as coaches, evaluate every single guy. So, you know, I'd say that, you know, obviously I don't know that that's our focus right now. Hey, a first, you know, first round quarterback. But at the end of the day, if, there, if a guy drops in your lap that you think can at any position can change your team, you know, Marty's advice to me, and I think I, and I definitely agree with it, has been don't let need over, you know, overtake what's the best thing long-term because, um, you know, when you, when you, when you draft, you're not drafting for the next 12 months, you're drafting for the next four to five to six years and hopefully on. So we want to make sure we make really disciplined decisions in the draft process. Hey, guys, so we got to let, we got to let coach go guys. Let's do one, one last one right here. Was that Josh? Yeah. Uh, coach, just to follow up on what Jordan had asked about Eric Reed's release. And then also, um, just kind of an overall broader question. What do you think success looks like for Matt Rule and the Carolina Panthers and, and your team in 2020 specifically? Um, yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a coach answer and because it's what I really believe, but um, Hey, I think it would be really hard for me to identify, Hey, this is, this is what the team should look like this year without, without having even met them. You know what I mean? I, I hope you can understand that. Like I think normally if I'd been through like, I was really looking forward to the to the to the mandatory not man, voluntary mini camp right before the draft because there's a lot of positions you know we wanted to look at guys to see you know where they're at right before we went into the draft and and we've lost that and that's the reason why they give that to a new head coach I mean you know the, the, the re, it's kind of hard to ask a head coach to go draft but not know what the guys look like and how they fit into their systems but that's where we are and that is what it is so you know for me right now I think you know I, I set little you know goals for myself of you know hey you know, whatever the talent is, whatever the roster is, wherever we feel like we're at, you know, we want to we want to play to that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if we have the talent to be an eight and eight team, then I want to shoot. I want to be eight and eight and fight to get to nine and seven. If we have the talent to be, you know, 13 and three, then I want to get there. Um, but I think it's hard for me to say any of that without, you know, without having been to the team. That, that being said, uh, I'll say this to you. My goals every year as a as a broad thing is, is man, I, and I learned this years ago from Jerry Reese. We want to be a team that 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 is is in the hunt coming down the stretch to go to the playoffs and 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 make a deep run and, and go try to win a Super Bowl. I mean, there's no reason to do this other than that. Are we there yet? I can't answer that. You know what I'm saying? I think I think I, I you know I need a little time to actually get around the guys and but that's what we want to build towards. Where every year, you know, I don't, most teams you can't win it every year, but you want to be you want to be relevant in the hunt coming down the stretch in you know October, November, and December. Um, so that's always been my approach follow up about the Eric Reed release? Yeah, you know, um, obviously it's hard for me because I haven't coached some of those guys. So I, I want to be very, you know, kind of measured in what I say, to be quite honest, because, um, you know, some of those decisions are, you know, I'm having to, um, you know, go based on, you know, what other people are saying and kind of hear it. So I think, I think um, you know, Eric's a really special guy, really good guy and enjoyed getting to know him. But I just think overall, we felt like it was the best thing for us moving forward, you know, to, 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 to move forward.